a wonderful care package book. Hello everyone. Today a brief look at this book sent to me by Joe St. Egg Benedictus in a care package some time ago, and I am just now getting to it. Uh, I am recuperating from some injuries, and the smaller the book, the better, because I can use one hand to hold it and open it. And uh, as I'm living on the first floor of a home that I generally utilize the second floor of, primarily, uh, if I'm going to have a stack of books around me, they better be small, which a lot of them aren't, but I appreciate that this one is. Imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis, familiar to most Christians, I'm sure. Something I have been meaning to read my entire adult Christian life, but have never gotten around to until now. So thank you, Joe, for the opportunity. This is a particularly neat little edition of it. Um kind of soft cover or imitation leather, uh, flexible. Look at that delightful end paper there. Has a name of a previous owner in it. We've got red around the edges. And just by way of comparison, here's a Gideon-sized Bible. It's an ESV crossway. Production, but same size as a Gideon. <clears throat> and the uh, Imitation of Christ, just a little bit larger than that. So, Imitation of Christ, Thomas A. Kempis, not the kind of book you'd sit down and read cover to cover uh, quickly, more the kind of book that you dip into here and there, uh, much like you may read the Proverbs or the Psalms or. Um, Wisdom of Solomon or some of these other books that are just too full of information, uh, thought-provoking uh, sentences. You don't want to really rush through it, although I have been because I convalesce on the sofa. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Thomas Alkempis, uh, 15th century um, German priest, theologian, what else was happening around that time, 15th century? Well, the printing press um, around that time invented also in Germany. Uh, the discovery by Europeans, well, the maybe the rediscovery by Europeans of the uh, continents of the Western Hemisphere. Also, the ideas that eventually made their way into the Protestant Reformation were sort of percolating in Europe at this time leading up to the beginning of the 16th century and uh, Luther's um, work in Germany as well, <clears throat> and later that century in, in England. Um, so a lot of things going on that sort of propelled this book into the place of honor that it's held in Christendom uh, over the past half half millennium. Uh, it is, to a large extent, a meditation on uh, personal piety. Uh, as a Nazarene, I might even say the life of holiness and is broken up into four separate books. From what I can tell, this is a complete and unabridged edition. It's the only one I've ever owned, so I can't Say with certainty, but from what I was able to tell, it is not abridged. And this particular edition has these really nice lithographs in them throughout. This is a Catholic publication, Catholic Book Publishing Company, New York. We have the Nile Obstat Imprimatur. Copyright 1941-1950. So printed around the turn of the last or the middle of the last century. Long table of contents here. So if you're looking for a particular subject having to do with personal piety, 
the life of a Christian, how best to imitate Christ. Yeah, you can utilize that very exhaustive table of contents. Certain of the chapters are addressed to monastics or those with a vocation to the uh, religious life, but the majority of it is addressed to your average Christian living out their lives and how they best can imitate the life of Christ. I have a little section here just to give you a feel for how the book is written. This particular translation, I believe Leland is the name of the translator. He's listed as the editor here. Reverend J.M. Leland, L-E-L-E-N, Ph.D. So I believe he's the translator. It was originally written in Latin, of course. So here we are in Book 2, Chapter 10 of gratitude for the grace of God. Why seekest thou repose since thou art born to labor? Dispose thyself to patience rather than to consolations and to carrying the cross rather than to gladness. For who is there amongst those of the world that would not willingly receive comfort and spiritual joy if he could obtain it at all times? Spiritual consolations indeed exceed all the delights of the world and pleasures of the flesh. For all worldly delights are either vain or impure, but spiritual delights alone are delightful and honorable as they spring from virtue and are infused by God into pure minds. Wow. <clears throat> Reading through this book has indeed been a spiritual consolation and spiritual delight, and I am pleased to have it. At the back of this particular edition, there are some prayers for Mass and morning and evening prayers for a devout Catholic to utilize. So very much intended for a Catholic audience. There are some litanies, long prayers here, invocation of various saints and such. Um, and then there's sort of a subject index at the back, much smaller than the table of contents at the front, but if you're looking for certain uh, prayer or meditation, you can... Uh, find it there at the end. A little over 400 pages, very handy size, nice looking book. Um, love it. I'll definitely keep this and we'll uh, dip into it here and there. I may just sit down and read through it again um, because it was uh, not a challenging read, but a challenging uh, bit of wisdom, let's say. So Imitation of Christ, if you've been putting off reading it as I did for much of my adult life, um, stop doing that. Pick up a copy. You can find them everywhere. It's one of the most, probably second to the Bible, the most printed and translated books in history. The problem, this is second, would be my guess. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a little something in my throat today. Anyway, thanks for uh, joining me for this little look. Find this, pick yourself up a copy, dip into it. Um, be fed by it, find the spiritual delights therein. Thanks for stopping by today. Hope to see you here again next time.